period before and during the Second World War was a time of significant experimentation and innovation in the field of aviation. Many new projects emerged with ambitious goals, pushing the boundaries and promising remarkable flight capabilities, while others were intended to act as a mere testbed for evaluation and further academic study. Some of these projects were developed by governments and military organisations, while others were the work of independent inventors and engineers. Skipa Caproni was one such project, in both cases falling into the latter option. It was an intriguing and somewhat bizarre experimental aircraft designed by Italian aeronautical engineer Luigi Stipa and built by Caprone during the interwar period. It was characterised by its tubular fuselage, hence earning it the nickname Flying Barrel. In 1927, a young Italian aircraft engineer, Luigi Stipa, began working on an unusual tube-shaped mid-wing monoplane. Like many other aviation enthusiasts of his era, Stipa harboured a keen interest in improving the flight performance of existing aircraft. His studies in thermodynamics had acquainted him with the Venturi effect, named after Italian physicist Giovanni Battista Venturi. The Venturi effect describes the increase in fluid velocity and decrease in pressure that occurs when a fluid flows through a constricted section of a pipe or tube. Stipa theorised that, by incorporating this effect into the design of an aircraft, it would be possible to achieve higher speeds and improved aerodynamic efficiency. Stipa's theoretical design featured a cylindrical fuselage with the engine positioned in the middle, creating a very unique looking plane. Through a series of wind tunnel tests conducted at the Aerodynamic Laboratory in Rome between 1928 and 1931, Stipa refined various design parameters, such as the shape of the fuselage and the exact positioning of the engine. Following these wind tunnel tests, Stipa reached the conclusion that it was feasible to construct a working prototype with a tube-shaped fuselage. To generate interest and secure funding for his project, Stipa documented his findings in the Revista Aeronautica, Aeronautical Journal, in 1931. He also reached out to the Italian Minister of Aviation and went as far as building a small-scale working model. Fortunately, his efforts paid off, as his project caught the attention of General Luigi Crocco, the director of the Air Ministry. Stipa's work was met with enthusiasm and the project was given the green light. To validate the entire concept, a working prototype now had to be constructed. It's noteworthy that both Stipa and the Italian Air Ministry understood that, even if a functional aircraft were to be developed, its primary purpose would be to serve as a test platform for further research. Moreover, they recognised that Stipa's proposed principle was most practical for larger aircraft types such as bombers, passengers or cargo planes. The decision to equip the prototype with a 120 horsepower engine was influenced by the intended purpose of the aircraft, academic evaluation and testing. The Italian Air Ministry likely did not want to allocate significant financial resources beyond what was necessary for constructing the working prototype, therefore opting for a modest, cost-effective engine choice. Caprone an aircraft manufacturer from Milan Taliedo was chosen to build the test aircraft. The project was designated the Stipa Caprone, sometimes referred to as Caprone Stipa, named after its designer and constructor. The prototype was swiftly constructed and was ready for testing by October 1932, highlighting the efficiency of the company's design and construction processes and the skill of their employees. It's worth mentioning that the aviation landscape in pre-war Europe was characterised by intense competition and innovation, with Italy emerging as a significant player in exploring new frontiers of aircraft design. Under the fascist regime led by Benito Mussolini, there was a strong emphasis on technological advancement and national prestige. Therefore, the Italian government, acknowledging the potential strategic and propaganda significance of aviation, agreed to back and financially support various aviation projects. This support extended to those projects considered unconventional or experimental, such as the Stipa Caprone, despite the fact that many of them did not produce any meaningful results.
the Stipe Caprone, designed as a two-seater experimental aircraft, boasted a distinctive fuselage. To streamline construction and reduce manufacturing costs, the fuselage was constructed symmetrically. Its basic structure comprised two larger wooden rings, followed by a series of smaller rings. These rings acted as spars, providing crucial structural support for the entire fuselage. Horizontal ribs interconnected these rings, forming the framework onto which the fabric covering was applied. The larger wooden rings served as critical components for attaching various other elements of the aircraft, including the wings and the pilot's cockpit. By employing this design, the Stipe Caprone had a fuselage that resembled a wing in shape, with leading and trailing edges, albeit elongated into a tube-like structure. The aircraft featured a set of wings mounted centrally on each side of the fuselage. These wings had a simple wooden construction covered in fabric, and they were connected to the larger fuselage wooden wing using metal braces. The wings were braced with 14 streamlined steel wires, which increased drag. To the rear, a fairly large tail assembly was placed. The rear control surfaces were intentionally positioned close to the slipstream, in hopes of improving the aircraft's overall flight performance and maneuverability. On top of this fuselage, an elevated two-pilot cockpit was placed. This was top open, with a small windshield placed in front of each pilot position. There was also a small door that opened on the left side. The 120 horsepower strong de Havilland Gypsy 3 engine was placed inside this fuselage. It was centrally positioned and suspended using several metal bars that held it strongly in place. This design feature was crucial for maintaining balance and stability in flight. Additionally, having the engine propeller with the same diameter as the fuselage was intended to optimize the performance and the efficiency of the aircraft during flight and help streamline the aircraft's aerodynamics. Due to its overall design and the placement of the propellers inside the fuselage, the landing gear of the Stipe Caprone was small and positioned quite close to the ground. It comprised three fixed road wheels, two larger ones at the front and one smaller wheel at the rear. Initially, wheel fairings were utilised, but at some point, and for reasons that remain unclear, these fairings were removed. With the project approved, a prototype was constructed and air-tested in October 1932 at the experimental field at Montecelio near Rome. Despite its unconventional design, the prototype successfully took to the skies without encountering any major issues. It conducted several successful flights around Taliedo and Guidonia. The prototype was even presented to the Italian Air Force for consideration for future test flights. Due to its distinctive appearance, the aircraft earned humorous nicknames such as Flying Barrel, Aereo Botte or Aereo Barile. During these flights, the aircraft weighed 800 kilograms with a calculated wing loading of 44.73 kilograms per square meter. It achieved a maximum speed of 133 kilometers an hour and required 40 minutes to climb to a height of 3,000 meters. Additionally, it needed an 800 meter long airfield for takeoff. Despite Steeper's hopes that the position and shape of the tail control surfaces would enhance the aircraft's controllability, several issues were noted by test pilots. Firstly, the elevator functioned excessively well, which ironically became a major problem, as even the slightest movements of the control stick by the pilots caused sudden and strong changes in the aircraft's elevation. On the other hand, the rudder was quite stiff. As a consequence, the pilot had to use considerable force in order to operate them effectively. Despite the two noted issues, the aircraft was reported to be quite controllable during gliding. These defects were of a more or less technical nature and could have been remedied through further development of the overall design. The final results of evaluation flights indicated that the Stipe Caprone did not exhibit significant superiority over conventional aircraft designs. Despite its favourable wing loading, its maximum speed fell short compared to other aircraft. This suggests that, while the Stipe Caprone may have had some merits, it lacks a decisive advantage in key performance metrics. This outcome came as no surprise to Stipe, 
who predicted from the start that his principles would not offer any major advantage over a standard, smaller dimension aircraft. He believed that the true potential of the Stipe Caprone design lay in larger aircraft, with a unique fuselage shape could offer more noticeable benefits. Stipe envisioned constructing large aircraft powered by multiple tube-shaped fuselages. However, further development and interest in the concept waned after a series of test flights in the early 1930s. Despite some initial attention and limited use in Italian aviation propaganda publications, the Stipe Caprone design ultimately failed to gain widespread adoption or support. By 1933, the project had been abandoned and the prototype was scrapped. Even though it was a rather unimpressive design, the French showed some interest in it. The company ANF Lex Moreau acquired a license for the Stipe Caprone design in 1935 and planned on building a two-engine variant for testing and evaluation. However, the project was cancelled after some basic work and it did not progress beyond the initial stage. In 1996, aviation enthusiast Guido Zuccoli embarked on the construction of a smaller scale replica of the Stipe Caprone aircraft. However, Zuccoli's unfortunate death in a landing accident caused a delay in the replica's final delivery. Eventually completed in 2001, the replica underwent numerous small flights. Powered by a 72 horsepower Simonini racing engine, it managed to achieve a flight distance of 600 meters at maximum. Following these flights, the aircraft replica was stored as an exhibit at the Zuccoli Collection in Toowoomba, Australia. This concludes our look at the Stipe Caprone, an undoubtedly unique and innovative aircraft for its time. While it may have offered some aerodynamic advantages and potentially improved stability, the tubular fuselage concept did not revolutionise aviation as initially envisioned by Stipe. As always, we welcome your thoughts and opinions on this fascinating aircraft, let us know what you think about its tubular shaped fuselage in the comments below. If you like what we do and want to see more, remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Also, don't forget to take a look at our extensive collection of articles on our website, plane-encyclopedia.com. Thank you.